the real key issues in order for our world to get back to any semblance of normality are to have better diagnostics, have new treatments, and then ultimately prevention, because this is not a virus that is just gonna come and go like SARS. And so let's talk about testing first. What we really need are tests that can be done at a restaurant, at an airport, in schools. And what that means is that it needs to get away from a laboratory-based effort, which right now, all the tests, you go to uh, some setting, a designated user does a nasal swab, the test has to go to a laboratory machine that has some complex uh, technology in it, and then you get a result a few days later. That's really not good enough. You have to be able to test in real time and very quickly isolate those individuals and then track people who have been exposed. And it needs to be inexpensive so it can be global and worldwide. All of the tests that are out there right now require amplification of the viral uh, genome. And so I can share with you a, a, a very novel approach that uh, one of our investigators at Glassfund developed actually over the last year and a half for HIV with the goal of being able to test people remotely where there wouldn't be a laboratory from hundreds of miles within that range. They developed a prototype and have now quickly ported that to this new coronavirus that meets, I think, a lot of the requirements that we need. And the key there is that they used a technology called uh, CRISPR and then coupled that with a technology where the camera on your smartphone can be used as a microscope, essentially, and detect a fluorescent output uh, from the uh, test that makes it so sensitive that you'd actually don't need to amplify the viral uh, uh, genome. And anybody who has a phone can use that to tell if they're positive or negative. So that gets it away from a laboratory and it puts it in the hands of users that can be used like a home kit, uh, like a pregnancy test, and it can be made cheaply. And so that's the kind of thing that we think we need to finally uh, be able to open up the economy. Uh, we can talk more about that, but that is a technology that we're trying to compress now. You know, normally that would be another 18 months to get to a product that can be distributed. And we've got a number of people helping us trying to compress that to a four to five month period. So by September, when people are thinking about going back to school and uh, other aspects will have that. And the beauty of it, doing it with the phone, is that you can easily develop it with an app that would in real time aggregate global data with geolocation information. Uh, so it will help in tracking and potentially with fever and symptoms and other outcomes data. So from an epidemiologic standpoint, you can imagine you could quickly have millions, hundreds of millions of data points and with good machine learning algorithms actually learn a lot from uh, about patterns.